I've told a great many secrets, tis true. Beyond this door lies the Holocron Vault. The Holocrons contain the most closely guarded secrets of the Jedi Order. Welcome to Tales from the Holocron. I am the man just trying to keep the peace between my two uh, loving children. Uh, today we are going to be discussing... Kevin Scott. Oh, I'm going to screw his name up already. Screw yeah. it up already. Kevin Scott it is. Here we go. We're going to talk about Kevin Scott. Uh, he is a writer. He's going to, uh, what direction he has taken in the past, kind of do a little bio, much like we did with the uh, soul uh, bio that I, a lot of people I hear liked. Um, today, uh, once again, we're joined by the space wizard himself, the man who has the light sword of love. Solo Wookie, what's going on, Solo? What's happening, guys? Uh, <laughs> Let the Wookie win. <laughs> hey, and, and once again, uh, a great friend of ours. Uh, he, he's better at the Red Ball organ than Max Rebo himself. Pete, Pete, give it to us. There you go, Pete. No sound at all. That's what we like to hear. Uh, <laughs> what do you want me to do? So, I don't have this. Yeah, you don't have the. Is it, isn't that great though? The red ball organ. That's the thing. That that's like, great. Comes up that's with awesome. That yeah. Whatever. Okay. Hey, so here, here it is though. Let's get into it. Cause they don't care about us jibber jabber yeah. about that kind of dorky stuff. They love it. Kevin Scott is, is, a, is an English writer who, uh, who got into star Wars through writing. Well, it's kind of, I guess you write all of them cause some of them started off as audios, but a six part series, uh, venture into the wild space. They were. It was a ju very junior, not even like young. I think it's, it's considered juvenile novels. Th those aren't. I read a lot of stuff. Yeah. I'll read some junior novels. Junior this novel. is not a junior novel series that I read. I read one book in the junior novel series of this one. I didn't. I don't usually do audio books because of how I read. I read multiple books at the same time, and it's hard for me to put an audio book into the rotation. With that being said. The important part of that is he introduces a, a two characters, Milo, and I'm going to screw it up again. It's Lena, Lena, L-I-N-A, the Graph kids. Um, these are important because what they do is they like his book so much and they like the audio books going on so much that they actually give him a section when IDW starts getting their air of writing Star Wars common books for canon and such. They give them a – he gets a section in uh, Star Wars – Adventures, and we will break down what Star Wars Adventures is. But think about Star Wars Adventures. If you watch the series on the Tales books, like Star Wars Tales, it's kind of a similar way. There's multiple storylines that go on, usually two to three storylines. Uh, Kevin Scott, for the run that he had, and he they would pull them off and put them back in. He would do a middle section, and it would typically be uh, Adventures into Wild Space. Uh, there was other people who took it over uh, and did like the bridging in between while he was doing other stuff, but he, he pretty much laid the foundation for that. It was, it and some of it, some of it was really cool the way they did it because it's not just two stories. Here's a story, here's a story, but part of it was very much like, here's a story and it's going. And then this person starts telling this story and then you're back to the original story. So it's a person telling a story inside the story. And then it, so, yeah, so, so it's part of it really plays out well. Okay. So what would happen is that there would be a whole completely different story in the first part. And then the second part there, one of the graph grandkids, I think it was in, in adventures. I think it's a grandkid would start telling a story. Yeah. Like he said, he'd start telling a story. Like he came in and say, Hey droids, how's it going? What is this? Oh, it's a monkey lizard hitting me with a, a wrench. Yeah, and they get into that story and then they go, it reminds, reminds me of the time. And then it's a completely different story. And like the first one, well, the ones that stick out, like there's a, there's a, um, you know, K2SO and um, what's his name? The guy, the guy from Rogue One. Cassian. And or? Yeah, Cassian. Yeah, Cassian. There's a story about them uh, in, in three. That's kind of cool. Like they'll do all these little back inside Phil stories. And actually in that Cassian one. So this is funny. In that Cassian one. And, and here I'm going to. In the Cassian one, this shows up. And if you don't know what this is, so for people that are just listening. It's three baby Chewbacca's, one named Wat. I'm going to screw that up. Wat it looks like a weird way to spell Wyatt. Yeah. So if you don't know what these are, these are. Wyatt. This yeah, is Wyatt. kind of like, this is kind of like a little cool. This is why I like this guy. It's almost a troll. Uh, Solo Wookiee, do you know who, who, who those little Wookiee guys there are? Uh, no, I mean, other than the, them touching into this, I 
do you, do we see him? Is this the other Jedi Padawan that we see later on in the other stories? I, they placate on the small youngling Wookiees several times throughout the galaxy, and they never tie them together. Um, yeah. So what I think he does here is I think this is a play on like kind of a little bit of the, the Christmas special thing because there's another book that he does where he adds in some of the Ewoks, and the Ewoks that he definitely pulls out were Ewoks from – that TV, do you guys remember the TV oh, the show, Christmas. the TV movie? No, the Wilkies were from the Christmas movie. The TV mm-hmm. show, they did, the yeah, they Ewoks did like the TV Ewok movie. TV mm-hmm. movie, and the Wyatt name is kind of And like it was an HBO Ewoks. exclusive. Yeah, so that Wyatt type name was kind of how they spelled one of the Ewoks, and I think it was called Caravan of something. something Caravan, Caravan on Endor? Car- Maybe. Uh, something on Endor. No, there's two, no, there's more than one. You're, you're talking about the one in Endor where it's just the boy and girl. I'm talking about oh. the one where like the Ewoks get like lost or something like that. It's like the kids get lost or something. Oh like that. yeah. So yes. he always is like hitting back like the. I guess I guess they must have played the Christmas special and they must have played those Ewok yeah. movies as much as they did over here. You know, so it's cool. So kind, he, kind of a flashback. Yeah, he definitely does these little like teaks in there where he starts <laughs> adding those little characters in there, and it's kind of fun. Um, there's definitely some good little parts in there. There is, uh, of course, here you go. I, I didn't put that that was maybe those two. That's that's a good tie-in. I had missed that. So <laughs> here's a little thing. So here's a little thing that you're going to kill me on because I'm going to mispronounce his name. And I know you like making fun of me when I do. He does have a story with Nibnub in it. Nibnub. So that guy's Nib- in there. Nibnub. Yeah, he doesn't. So that's in there too. And it, it, it they're good. Like they're kiddish but good. And they do remind me a lot about... He definitely has read. He definitely read the legacy stuff at one point, probably in his youth. You know, he definitely had been watching because you know the. I don't know the last time those TV shows played up, but he definitely had have been watching the TV shows at one point, uh, something to that effect too. So I think, you know, it's a good guy that's got a little bit of humor in it. If you like that humor, if you like Easter eggs, kind of a lot like when we were talking about Soul, how Soul does certain type of Easter eggs too. This guy's Easter eggs are a little bit more mm, deep cut. Yeah, deep cut. You know. Obscure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a little oh, out of the out of the norm, I guess you would say. Who's going to want to go to the Christmas special? Like everybody's going to want to. Yeah, but he like combines like things. two. He combines like two of them, so he's like not just trolling the Christmas special. He's also trolling but, the character. But it does dude. work. It's works. Yeah. It's kind of fucking cool. Look it's kind at, of dope. Look at Mando. Mando's uh, the the gun. Wow, brain fart. Um, they 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 brought in. Um, uh. Anyway, he brought that in. They brought that in from the Christmas special on the cartoon short of the of Boba Fett. Yeah, and some of the coloring. Yeah, so like that's. I think like that's what I'm saying. Like they're taking stuff from some of these yeah. books that he's writing and like going like, that's kind of the way to do it because it's clever, right? Like he does yeah, a lot of clever it's things. Not. It's good. And then what he does too, and you know that he, you know that he's like such a a lover of it because he fights to bring in this character. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry I'm laughing for those that aren't watching. He put up the cover. He brought in a character called Jackson, which is the space Wait, rabbit guy. That's not Bucky uh, O'Hare? No. <laughs> not Bucky O'Hare. No, but that's Jackson. Yeah, so he brings in Jackson, uh, which like is another like kind of deep cut, right? Like he's out of the original Marvel uh run on this. Um now in, in some of the books some- it's just not advertised as the digital ash can. Yeah, no, they had a digital ash can, I think, on some of them. So, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, there was, uh, but, but with, so this is the original character when he came out. I remember when he came out in the Marvel section and was reading the books. And some people, like, it wasn't as bad as a backlash of Jar Jar Binks, per se. Uh, <laughs> it <but> was pretty <laughs> close, though. <laughs> yeah, like, it definitely was a niche thing where, like, kids kind of loved, loved Jackson because he's like, he is, he's like this space rabbit, like, hooligan kind of pirate thing but like people that are reading the star wars books because you know i mean and then we'll get into that old marvel series too like there's different tones to that marvel series there's some very tones that were very orientated towards the uh the movies the actual mo- the original three movies and there's some tones where it's like okay like the, jackson the rabbit you know like yeah, yeah well, he was wars rocket was before rocket like yeah 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 the rocket yeah. raccoon yeah, the, that's the, the modern thing. rocket the raccoon though. yeah the modern one so he did all this stuff in there, and like, there's it's definitely a long series. I think it's 38 books and two annuals and a couple of free comic book day books, which we're going to get into. I'm not going to go over the whole series for that if you guys do want me to. I mean, I'm not going to go through it now because that would make this very long. 
I can go back into them and some of the other stories and kind of explain how he does do the Ewok troll thing. Put in the comments. We'll shoot another video on it. Um, we'll get there, but for this episode, it's yeah, a it's rabbit hole. Too big of a rabbit, yeah. It's, or a Jackson hole. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended, folks. But okay, he does maybe a little pun. <laughs> but he does put out two books that are very interesting. Um, one is the 2018 uh, FC BD book. Yeah, that's it. There we go. Thank you. And that's got uh, Zuckus and Four Lum. Four Lum. Four Lum. Four Lum. Who's Zuckus and Four Lum there, Solo Wookie? So, though Zuckus and Forlom are two bounty hunters, and they really get their first introduction on the platform in Empire Strikes Back when you see the first um, panning and Vader telling them no death, hunt, hunt Han and the Millennium Falcon, and you have the whole lineup there of Boba Fett and IG-88, um, no Bosk. Yeah, no disintegrations. Bosk and Dengar, Forlom and Zuckus. And Forlom and Zuckus are a pair in the Bounty Hunters. They always work together when they work throughout the galaxy. Yep, that's right. They're a team-up pair. This actually, I like this book. I love this book. I had four copies, and my kids liked it too, so now I have zero copies because they tore them apart. Hmm. But it's a good storyline. I do enjoy it. And this is kind of this was actually my real introduction into Scott uh, was through this free comic book. Uh, if you get it, yeah. read it. I don't think and there's like Scott you know, did didn't I don't yeah don't I'm almost positive he didn't write tales from the bounty hunters but if you guys want to ex explore further into the bounty hunters of those guys go read tales from the bounty hunters it's totally separate from any other you don't have to read a book before or after you can pick that up read it blah 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 and it'll help explain read for, yeah, but definitely pick up those free comic book day books read that one the second yes. one he did and this is where we're going to really get into it because that was my intro to it. The second book that he had was a 2019 book, and in this book has something that I absolutely love. This is Droid Hunter was the actual story that was told in here, and Droid Hunter has to deal with my favorite series uh, that Scott wrote, and that is you. If you if if you listen to any of our other stuff, I think I bring it up in almost every other show forever, <laughs> saying that we're going to do a show on it. We aren't doing a show on this actual series. We're just going to do it in this series because Scott did the book. It is Vader's Castle. And Vader's castle had some of the best, um, I would say, in my opinion, I like a lot of their variants. They did. A, there was a lot of cool style variants that did to them that were not that expensive compared to the book because the comic book was running. You know, I, those IDW books, I think, are 4 or $5 a piece, especially for the number ones. So if you're going to pay $5 for the regular cover and you can get the one in 15 for like 8 to $10 because you can because nobody was buying yeah. them. Nobody bought them, so right now I literally just got a set of the cover A and cover B, and I think it, I think I paid like maybe two dollars a piece. Yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it. The art's cool, in my opinion. I like it. The art's cool. This is why we brought up in the beginning the adventure books, the the Kitty Junior books, because then he brings back Milo, or he brings back Lena, Lena, whatever. He brings back the Graph Girl. Um, he brings back the graph girl and she kind of is the narrator. So he takes the same format that he was using in the comic books of the star Wars adventures where it starts off and she will come in and give like a little intro. She'll do a little speech in the beginning and pretty much how the story starts off is they go, she has a, a couple crew members and they end up falling on must 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 far. Must have far where where Vader's castle is. And funny story, my uh, daughter just corrected me on how to say that planet's name tonight while I was reading <laughs> that last preview book, as a matter of fact, because that's what her reading choice was. And you're raising her right. Yeah. So they end up falling uh, on the planet, and then they, they go into Vader's castle. And um, while they're going to Vader's castle, they break into other storylines. In the first book, it it uh, it's a Kanan and... It's a Kanan and Hera storyline. Something about a holocron. By the way, like the stuff that he's writing in these, um, I don't know if you guys remember this, but like when he starts writing the one in the first book, it's about Hera and Kanan, and there's there's a secret ancient being that they have to that's taking over droids, and they somehow have to um, they somehow have to collapse it into a holocron. Um, 
he ends up getting on their ship and taking over their ship, which is they find a wrecked ship on an asteroid where a uh, guy is stranded. I can't remember his name because, yep, that's why. And um, they end up picking him up and trying to help him. And the ghost actually leaps from the old ship onto the, the, the ghost this one? that... That they're flying. Yes, yes. yeah, that's yes. cover. Yeah, Frank Ghost story. Cover. I, I love Frank and V. He does some awesome covers. Yeah, yeah, so they have definitely. They sorry, they have definitely cool colors. I'm sorry, I was getting some feedback, so I'm trying to figure that out. But they were, yeah, they did some cool. They jump in there and they take over Chopper for a little bit, don't they? I think they mm -hmm. take. He takes yep. over Chopper. Eventually, they get it in a holocron. Once again, just like Soul, this is a guy who puts these little things in there. And stuff will jump up, and that hasn't jumped up again. But I'm willing to believe we'll see it down the road. Uh, just so you know, like he does that, like just like I said with the graph kids, he used them a long time ago. Then he brings in their grandkid. Then he brings in her back yep. again, like five, six years later, to start doing this series. It is something he does a lot. The next book in, is it two? Yeah, two's Dooku Vampire Man. <laughs> So let me explain Vader Castle real quickly. Let me take a step back. So how the whole concept of Vader's Castle came up was. Scott likes, he's a big fan of uh, Tarkin, and he's apparently a big fan of, is it Dooku? And Tarkin, they're real actors though, not Tarkin, I mean he is a Tarkin and Dooku, but the real actors were in a horror film, so he got this brilliant idea that every year around Act Tower, he was hoping to do minis, which as a, as a fan of pop culture, as a comic book fan, of somebody who really enjoys it, likes that type of stuff, I love the mini world, like I love I love shorts, minis. I love yeah. when they used to have in comics where they do the one story in the front and the back half of another story, and then you have yeah. to go to another comic book and buy the back half. So I, Vader's Castle was made for me. I mean, I know it's made for children, but it's also made for me because yeah. like these are how I remember reading books a lot of times. To this day, I think that's probably why I read multiple books at the same time because I like to switch in between the storylines and everything like that. And Vader's Castle is that. Like, it's super cool. So he, he, got, a, he got a couple in the first – I think it was four or five in his first run. It was five bucks in his first run. And he was like, man, I hope this works out. He released it during October. He did kind of a horror thing dedicated to that. And he kind of included some of those characters into it. So like Dooku's in there and Dooku is a Dooku vampire. This Dooku vampire thing is crazy. I, I, Solo, what do you, do you like it? Because I liked it. Like the whole I, oh, I loved it, man. I thought it was great. I thought it was something that was, but I, I, I don't know. I liked all of them because they weren't, they're not your typical Star Wars. They're not your everyday like, this is the EU and we only have this parameter that we can work with. Like, yeah. I, I think he really looked at the box and said, how do I stay just above the edge of the line of this box? I want to be outside the box, but not so far that people hate it. I just want to be on that just next level and, and I can keep it bring new ideas. So he was working with the writing group too, to make sure that it could stay into Canon and the stuff right, he did, right. like the do the art, the artist that he matched up or whoever did with the storyline are brilliant that when you yeah. see dooku for the first time so there's a vampire bat type thing that can absorb energy it's like a it's not just a person it's well there's a, there's one but he's like a re leader of a whole group and he can transform people he transforms a clone by is everybody he's bites them because they infect oh the infection starts later okay so that guy bites a, a clone and the clone turns into one of them and then dooku made a deal with them but the guy of course backstabs dooku but they keep it in canon because Dooku was making that deal as part of the um, – to fight the Galactic Republic and be part of the Trade Federation. So, like, they mention that in there, and they do that. And, dude, it's crazy. Like, I'm not going to give away most of the story. Read it. It's really cool. I think you guys will enjoy it. Like I said, I think, Wookie, you just picked up the series again because you didn't want to dig through to find it. And right. what did you say? You paid, like, $2 a book? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's out there. You can it's find out there. it. It's there. just – it's not – a. It's not the big, like, it's not the big uh, hype return. I'm going to buy these and then get nine eights and turn around and sell them. You know, it, yeah. it, it's one of those, like, oh, these are the books you pick up and read because they're yeah. fun. The artwork is fun. The storyline is fun. You get, you get so multiple different. stories. In five yeah. books, you probably get 15 stories because yeah. of the way that they did it and the way they yeah, tell stories in story. It's yeah, no, just well, so a really one, good. So there's one main story. The the, the Gaff Girl story Correct. is like the main story that goes across it. You get the front portion of that, a back portion. In the middle, they tell this type of story and mm -hmm. some type of horror story in between. It um, 
and and like the covers though, like man, it's cool. Like everyone's got different artists, a different cover. They're not. It's it's something if you just if you love Star Wars, I, I really do suggest it. I can't speak highly enough of this. I this is and, where I started really becoming a fan. Yeah, these aren't Star Wars artists. Like again, I'm looking at like the cover artists for somebody like Kelly Jones and like. Francesco Frank Francavia, like they're not your typical yeah. Star Wars artists. Those are like no. on the horror side, a little more of the uh... and the horror that's in it is not like oh it's, my god, it's not like watching Annabelle or Annabelle Creation or it's something that's scary. No, but it's it like, is it's... child horror, so it's it's like fun. You understand the premise of the scare, yeah. but the scare isn't there. I mean, it, it's pass... it's just fun. So he passed it by the story. I mean, it's there's a story, the story in the story. So there's there's a rumor out there. I think it's probably pretty true. I guess it is. Is that he uh, he passed all the like he had to pass the books through the story group to get approval mm -hmm. of if it was age appropriate for all ages and like yeah. they had a they had to say yes to everything. But it's kind of like the double troll thing, right? Or like the deep cut thing, right? These are like deep yeah. deep cuts on what he's going through in the monster series. So then we get up to uh, the third book in that series. In the third book, and this is the one I like to call uh, the Poison Ivy Sisters. It's a Han and Chewie story, and uh, there's these two owl sisters, and one wants Han to make a delivery. Once again, there's another character in there that's, like, getting really old, and, like, they mentioned, like, they've mentioned him before, and I don't think they have who's in this book, who's another smuggler type thing. If they ever get back into the Han Solo smuggler thing, you might see this guy show up, too. Like, anyways, pretty much these vines end up sucking your life out. Chewie wipes out the thing. And then I think the sisters, re I don't know who even cares what happens to the sister. It's cool. Cool. <laughs> Some cool covers for that. Uh, for, for when I'm talking about completely different art than like, I don't need Pete. How do you explain the art in this book? The... It's an Ewok story. Yeah. <laughs> it's like half sketch. It's like a wicker man Ewok. Like. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's, so in this story, th there's like a, there's a, there's an Ewok that tries to trick. I think it's Logie and, maybe Chupa or something. It's two other Ewoks. So he brings in more Ewoks and I, like tries to trick them. Isn't think, it low gray, low yeah, gray low, and low gray. Low gray. Yeah. Whatever. Low gray. And yeah. Who's the other one? Do you remember who I, the other one was? I, I think it's Chirpa. Other. Is it Chirpa? I think so. Okay. So is it, is it them and their kids or something? What he tries to trick them all into going to this, yeah, into this like burning man type Ewok thing. That's going to be sacrificed to the, uh, what would you consider that? A troll gnome? I, Chupacabra. And that too? It's a combination of all of them? He is. It, it's like a, he literally is, is a, almost like a, a, a placation of, of the, uh, um, the, the Mexican devil, the Chupacabra. Yeah. So, I mean, that's really kind of cool. That's uh, – that I really like that. Um, and, like, the artwork is definitely, like – it looks sketchy, so it's a little kind of creepier – you know, it doesn't look like there's not like full huge color on it. I don't know who does art like that because yeah, I don't that, follow artists that well. But like, that um, looked like it could have been Hack. Like, because one of the covers was Robert Hack, and he does a lot of the Sabrina covers. And maybe that was him because it does list him as one of the interior artists. Yeah, I yeah, that that might be what it could be. Yeah, so I mean, well, that's at least what it's like. It's like a Hack style art, right? So like, it's super dope, super cool. Once again, in my opinion, but uh, that's just me. So you get you get through that, and then that's uh. And then in the last one, Vader, it's the Vader. Is that the Vader? It's a Vader story, but they kind of tell you like, oh. The terror of Darth Vader? Yeah. So like, no. So in the last one, Vader finds these people in the castle. They finds the gaff girl and all the rest of them. She gets away, but they end up capturing uh, one of like her associate. I think the Hot. Name. Hot. Hot. Yeah. Hot. Hud. Hud. Skrit. And doesn't Skrit end up dying? There's this little character that's like a. Can you explain Skrit? It's oh, like a what would you, I, um, <laughs> it's like a four or six layer. Holy, like, yeah, holy! Like, I don't know. It fits I, I, the horror thing. Like that's what I'm um, saying. Like just us get like like laughing. Like that's how much joy this series gives me. Because just talking about the series makes me smile yeah. and laugh and go like that was really cool. Like I can't even explain it, but it was really cool. It and is. It's I mean, cool. It's so outside of the I'm box, a, but it's still in. Continuity with everything, continuity and, and it just—it just, it's crazy it just how keeps that. going. Man. It's just and fun. Look, I know I'm overselling the series. I know somebody's gonna be like, "Yeah, that's not that good." 
Not for everybody. If you're buying it for cheap. Like if you're going out to get it now, like. It's not a you know twenty dollar book that you're gonna find. You I don't think it's ever gonna be a twenty dollar book. Bin. I think you'll always. You're just getting it to read. Just remember, yeah, no. level set your expectations. Yeah, of yeah. what you're buying, you're buying it to read it. So just enjoy it. Like enjoy it. Like this is a series for sure to enjoy. But you can see. But the the greater point on is it starts showing. Look, he remember he started out writing like junior, like kitty now. Like mm-hmm. when we're saying mm-hmm. junior novels, we're talking like you know six year old, seven year old, ten year old, nine year old stuff. Right. And now he's writing it, but he's writing horror. Yeah, for the same thing, and it's yeah, pre, like preteen teen. I think I think these yeah. books well, kind of get into that little more knowledgeable preteen kind of I, area teen. Um, that, that's kind of how the other ones were too, though. There was like a, a sure. bad guy in, in in the in the actual junior novels where you're like, it depends on how your kid is. I mean, look, if your kid's playing video yeah. games at six, these books aren't anything to him. Maybe. Exactly. I, I got a seven year old that you, you'd be surprised at things that they can they can actually handle. And I think about it now, like when I was seven, like I was born in 77. So when I was seven, I went to the theater and saw Terminator. Like put that into perspective. I would not show my son Terminator today, no, I either. but I, apparently <laughs> I was taken to see it. So I think I turned out OK. Well, uh, the first, I think I, I think the first time I went to see uh, Jedi, I was four. So yeah. do the math. Jedi, right. I would have been six. I was at what eighty three. So I'd have been like five or six, depending yeah. on the time of year when I was taken. Not sure Jedi, but like go back and watch Jedi. I'm not quite sure that was appropriate for a four year old, but apparently that's what gets yeah. me hooked in. We won't. We we'll, we won't talk about what Solo will give us watching between yeah. eighty three and eighty six. <laughs> the, so, the first movie I took my son to was Force Awakens because he, he it was like, well, it's Star Wars. I got to take him, and he was three, I think, at the time. So. But that's what I'm saying. So, so, I mean, this is something that's in the kids section, and obviously kids probably did pick it up. And then guess what? It's turned into a cheap book. When you're taking your kids in with you to the comic book store, I give them cheap books. I don't give them expensive yeah. books because they tear them apart. And these exactly. are things that kids are going to like. And, and the Let them read it, covers, enjoy it. Read it, enjoy it, keep them around. But, and I'm not adults, saying are, I encourage them to just kids and adults, read them together. When did our society lose the the entertainment and joy of reading a book to your kid before yeah. they go to sleep? I mean, this is great material for that. Absolutely, well, apparently, perfect. I do because I read the free comic book day before my kids went to bed. <laughs> no, that's but what I'm saying is like that. That's a great PSA. Read books with your kids. Go out to get these. These yeah. are perfect for your kids. Absolutely, if you don't want to read it. I think you're going to enjoy them as an adult too. If you don't sure. have kids, I didn't always have kids. Um, I still read comic books. This is a series that's cheap, good to read. Plus. Then it's not just five. You can take a little break, take a breather. And it was this book, it was actually really, believe it or not, well received. And for a five dollar book under IDW and to have a mini turnout in Halloween, to have it well received, I think it was really I'm not sure it was so much the kids that that liked it. I think it kind of was that middle age in the twenties and the older guys that are in their thirties and forties that were picking this up because they were thinking about how good it was. I remember at my LCS, I was telling everybody how good it was and people were like, really? They're like, yeah, they started buying it and they started, uh, started doing it. So the next year, cause I think he's, and he might keep doing this. He was like, Hey, cause it's not October yet. Is it? No, nope. it should, might come up yeah. again. So in 19, he was like, Hey dude, let's uh, do Vader returns. So Vader now the returns, yep. or yeah, return to return to return Castle Vader. Vader. Yeah. We have Castle Vader. Yeah. So, um, this time he changes around the narrator. This is the, uh, Darth Vader's got, a an acolyte that goes around with them. And this is Darth Vader's acolyte, some crazy, creepy guy. Uh, and he starts telling the story of, uh, of what's going on. Now in this series, the first book is a banger. It's a banger. Um, I'm going to just give you the covers and then, uh, well, that's a, actually interior page. I'll give you one of the covers that I like right here. This is probably mine. And I think there was three or four of these for those people that can't see it. It is Darth Maul, and he's got the spider bottom on it. From mm. Clone Wars, you remember he got it on. And actually, didn't technically they have... Yes. He was only two legs in Han Solo, the Solo movie, right? It was Clone right, Wars, right, right. the spider bomb. Right. So, yeah. so they did all of the Darth Maul um, exploratory when he... All of the... A big part of this story, we end up seeing in... Um, Clone Wars. Oh, which season is that? And they tell about him but they being said, down his in brother there, down there. Yeah. So, yeah. Mother Townsend oppress when they send oppress his brother. Mm-hmm. Mother Townsend gets him and sends him down to where he is. In this book, they start doing the backstory of how that 
how that turned out. They do the backstory on how like he was down there and this group of kids were sent down to try to – a bounty hunter got these guys to try out for the bounty hunter team. And oops, who's down there? Dar- Spider Darth Maul, right? He's got all the legs and he starts and trapping these kids. And he doesn't them. tell the kids. He's just – he tells the kids there's a ghost down there, a spirit, a spook, a specter, a ghost. You know. Yeah, if you want to be a bounty hunter, you just have to make it 24 hours. If you make it or, a hours, yeah, <laughs> or a ghostbuster. Or a ghostbuster. You'll be part of the squad. We'll be good. Um, yeah. and it turns out that's Darth Maul there, and it turns out that Darth Maul uh, tried to trick them to get off the planet. And of course, it doesn't work good because we know that uh, he just kills people, and then his brother has to rescue him anyways from that planet. So we know how that turns out. But if you want the backstory on that, if you're a Clone Wars fan of that, if you like, if you're a Darth Maul fan, and uh, I thought some- he, I thought he wrote the craziness because they kind of show it in the Clone Wars. But I thought his writing of Darth Maul's kind of losing it, you know, going a little bit crazy, a little bit, you you know, that borderline. uh, Yeah, he's been by himself. He's doing a little bit of that shining, a little bit of that um, uh, Joker kind of, I'm losing it, you know, kind of going over the edge. Inner inner monologue stuff that goes on in that book. That's really cool and shows the I thought he did a great job writing that. Very good job of that. The artists on that book, I think there's a bunch of, there's a couple covers. There's a black and white cover. There's, there's a bunch of covers. Uh, we'll try to show some of them, the other ones too, especially considering, I guess, Pete's really excited about the artists that are on this. And I and do. I love some, art. I'm an artist guy. Yeah. Some of these variants are hard to find. They're fun. I, and, and when you do yeah, find them, they're 50. still normally kind of cheap, but they're yeah, not I easy the, to find. I think the order level was 10 or 15 to qualify from. It wasn't too high, um, yeah. but who was ordering 15 of them, even though it did well, how well did it actually do? So, I mean, you can find them in dollar bins. So, and you can find the the B covers and the variant covers pretty cheap too. I think we've, we've already covered that. So the next one. Uh, oh yeah. I love this story. <laughs> so then talking about how he's a fan of Tarkin, he does what I consider, I call, I'll call it the Tarkin weapon X uh, episode. Well, the super uh, scroll, like, super scroll, or super, well, no, although because he kind of well, maybe super scroll because yeah, because he puts them together, he like builds this mutant thing, and it's like, of course, then it's well, it's also the it's take off of Frankenstein, too. So, like, this is where his deep cuts get because it's a Frankenstein monster kind of story where he's like, oh, daddy, you da, 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 and he goes out there and kills and brutalizes people, and then is looking for Tarkin. And uh, well, you know, the only but, thing that can. Uh, Kill Met- Tarkin is the Death Star blowing up. So Met- uh, Metamorpho in that in that um, also too. He, yeah, 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 because he does have a claw hand at one point. I think he's got a tail too. Yeah. All he needs to do is breathe fire. Uh, he's got a horn. So yeah, you're right. I mean, it's a combination of all those things. He does yeah. that once again. Yeah, that's definitely Joey Jones. Jones. That, that I, I recognize that art. Yeah, is it who? Yeah, say it again. Kelly Jones. He did cool. like those uh, covers to the Batman when uh, Bane broke uh, Batman's back oh, back in the cool. nineties. That was yeah. him. And it's good. So that's what I'm saying. He, every book has a different artist on it too, which is pretty dope. So he's, if you don't like the style of the last one, you can go to the next one. I mm-hmm. thought they did their best work. Maybe they were just mm-hmm. trying to showcase off for this. Um, then we got two covers that I absolutely love in three. Uh, uh, this is the black and white. Okay. And this is, you are already talking about this artist already. Uh, I like the color in this too. It's great. And uh, this is the, uh, this is, oh man, I love this one. This is oh, the one. So I own the black and white, and I own this one. I own both of these. Um, this you want to sell Aja- them? <laughs> <laughs> no, because like I mean, they're not expensive, but they're hard to find. Exactly. Yeah. Now I like, know where I not, just found them too. <laughs> uh, they're not. They're not easy to find. They're so, not, and I am a huge Aja guy. I love so, Aja. So this, this is- story is so so fun. I love it, and. They start to tell you about Aja becoming a bounty hunter. Yeah. And that is so fun, man. I love it. I love it. So do you know what the cut on this one is? You know what this is, right? Like baby Sarlacc, you know what that is? Mm-hmm. It's a little it's a little house of horrors. Like that's what yeah, it is. It's yeah. a fly trap. It's yeah. It's a hundred percent a cut on that. And like, yeah, and then yeah, the adventurous thing and like the rich kid thing. I mean, hey, I'm trying. I'm giving you an overview. I'm trying not to spoil it, but you can tell by the the voice tones or the smiles <laughs> on her face. Like this book was definitely like something. It was definitely cool. It was it's definitely cool. The, now the next one, I didn't really give you the, uh, I didn't really get much into it. It's a syndicate Jabba brain thing. Uh, it's like really psychedelic. 
The art's crazy. Um, Fun like, story and some good background, definitely. Especially if you watch Clone Wars, because they do bring in part of Jabba's uh, his cousin and talk yeah, but, and blah 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 blah. Okay, so with the, well, no blah 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 blah. If you liked it, cool. This that book, excluding this panel that I'm showing right now, was probably my least favorite out of all ten books. Mm. It wasn't bad. It just was my least favorite. So I don't have a lot to say well, about it. Something has to be the least favorite. I mean, yeah, it's the least favorite. Harm, no but cow. this is dope. So at the end, an Inquisitor shows up. And it's like, what's going on? Vader Acolyte, game time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. it doesn't fit the book though, because like throughout the whole book, you're getting like really trippy, like lava color artists, like lot, like there's like brains flying in bubbles, and like it's really, really trippy, trippy, trippy. I remember when they did the X Men hippie books and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's kind of like that, like a, just not my style, man. It's an acid trip of some kind. Yeah, like Star Wars is for everybody, but not all Star Wars is for you. And same thing with this. That just wasn't my thing, and then it was my thing. And then I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Now this is kind of cool. So that side story really was keeping me locked in with what's going on because they're torturing – the whole side story that they're doing is the the accolade is not just talking – he's talking junk, but he's talking junk to HUD because they actually captured HUD, everybody, and they killed the little squirmish thing, the little worm, six-arm, whatever we're going to call, skirt – I think they killed him or squashed. I can't remember what they did. Um, but what's her name got away? The graph girl got away. So hmm. he's, this guy's just getting tortured and he's laughing at him. He's like, ah, you can't really torture me. You're just some like lackey and blah, 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 blah. Then all of a sudden the inquisitor shows up and says, man, you, you are a lackey. Like you're kind of terrible. And then it gets into uh, the last portion, something above this cover, by the way, absolutely love this color that's why i did it. i didn't do any of the interior in this but i showed this cover and it's the vader zombie story so remember yeah. in the first series they did the vampire like uh bat story with dooku now this one is like this the so at one point there was an attacking force that attacked vader's castle it was the locals right and that's a well-known story but in this story here they kind of do the same thing but now it's like these creatures that are on the planet and if they touch you you like turn into kind of a mind controlled zombie thing. And there's like this Sherman that comes in and he's like, I will control you all and uh, whatever it is. And he's in there and he's like, yeah, you shouldn't have put your Sith planet, he, even though it's built on a Sith like whole. So I don't get why he's doing that. Don't care. Cause the story was so good. Cause Bar Vader turns into like a mind controlled zombie. And hmm. then he just, well, he, he, he fakes him. Cause yeah, he goes all he Vader. He, he gets, goes all Vader. Then he goes he Vader. Gets, it's great because it, I like the way that he tied it together. In the first one, he gets bit by the vampire, Dooku, and all that stuff. And they do all the bat and the vampire fight. And fight and the fight, fight, fight. Well, in this one, it's got lava zombies, which is awesome, right? Lava right. zombies. <laughs> and so he bites Vader on the arm. And so the controller of the lava zombies is like, ha-ha, you're mine now. And I can mind control you. You're all mine. And Vader kind of <laughs> tricks him and turns around in the end and goes, dude, like, I'm robot, bro, from my ear down. <laughs> like, you, can, you can bite a bunch, but if you're not in, yeah, 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 take it. It does not. Yeah, uh, he's like, I, I am. I didn't solder another one on. Nobody wants to tear my arms and legs. <laughs> we, we, we know, by the way, if you watched our uh, our show, High ground. <laughs> one of our other shows that we did, we, we discussed how Vader could, uh, actually maybe it was the Soul Show, how Vader can like rebuild himself out of robot parts by using the Force. So yeah, it had nothing to do with him. And then he goes complete like, hey, where's where, where are the plants of the Death Star on these dudes? He like just... Phew, Everybody's gone, uh, destroys them. So it's pretty cool. It's cool. The art in there is great. Like seeing the zombie, the zombie uh, Vader. Once again, I don't know who that artist is. I think it was scrolled on the bottom. Pete, you're you're an artist uh, lover. So. I was looking at that. The, yeah, the artist that would have been on that, Charles Paul Wilson the third. I don't know much about him. I like it, dude. I like that cover. I own that cover. That was I picked up two of those two. There's another. I actually like the regular cover too, which is again a Frank Avia because it looks kind of like yeah. a swamp thing. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It's got like a swamp thing too. vibe going. Mm -hmm. So these covers are like dope. Like like you said, there's a lot of options in these covers too. Choose and the ones you like. Fun. Read them. See if you can pick them up in a pack. If not, make a deal with it. Well, when they ever open the cons or go to your LCS and see if they'll make a deal yeah. for for a thing. Uh, see if you can get in there. I highly suggest this one. Um, please like it. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. But <laughs> it's just not for you then, man. You know, I mean, yeah. that's cool. We're all good with that. Okay. So now that uh, – now we can end this. We don't have to talk to – no. We have more on Scott, but um, – <clears throat> 
that definitely was a little bit of a love fest there. It definitely got me hooked on his writing. And then the next thing got me really disappointed. The next thing I was really upset about because I was in, uh, I was over at uh, <clears throat> Chicago Comic, the Chicago uh, Celebration. So what was that? Was Star year? Wars Celebration? Yeah, I was over at Star Wars Celebration and I was going through the, um, <clears throat> the Del Rey area. And I was like, this can't be right. Because like I looked it up before and I was can't be right, can't be right, can't be right. And they're they are starting to do this and I'm kinda of disappointed. And I talked to Scott and I was like, Hey bud, like For I'm those like, of you that don't know Del Rey is a publisher, a book publisher. Yeah, they do a like, lot of like novels. novel, not like comic book, but like novel book. Not the so, artist Vanessa Del Rey. Yeah. So it was after the 18, before the review one, I was like, Hey, love your stuff on like and I don't really keep track of artists, but when I know well, know that I love it. Love it. I said, hey, love your stuff on uh, Vader's Castle. He's like, thanks, thanks, thanks. I go, what's going on with Dooku Jedi Lost? Dooku Jedi Lost is pretty much uh, Dooku's backstory when he was a kid. And they originally released it as an audiobook. And when I had talked to Scott about it, he said, it's, it's an audiobook. It's coming out. Are you excited? I said, no. He's like, <laughs> you're not excited? And I'm like, no, I mean, I am excited about that. But like, when are you going to release it in? In, in in paper form and he's like huh and they go well you're going to release it in paper form right and he goes we actually don't have a plan to release it in paper form yet. it's just going to be an audio thing we're going to see how it goes I go, you're going to release a major storyline about and, and they had the story art that i just showed already with ventress on it and dooku and you're not going to release it in in storyboard and he's like well we've been thinking about it, but we're really we're really really going to see how this audiobook works apparently it did pretty well i'm just not an audiobook fan uh, I suggest you listen to it because everybody that I know that did listen to it really enjoyed it. They thought they did a great job with it. I think that he wrote the story really well, and I could see how he did it. There was some stuff in the story when they wrote it in print that translate. I don't think translates as well. Like they used less Yoda in it because Yoda wouldn't. For those that don't know, Yoda was you know Dooku's trainer, so like. They used less Yoda because they didn't want to overutilize Yoda and the voiceovers and stuff like that and make it like all from his point of view. How it pretty much starts off is they end up going through, uh, they tell you, you know, he's from Sereno. Is that how you say it? I, I know that's like a place in Italy, but wherever he's from, he's from this planet. He's like a little rich boy or whatever. And he goes out, Yoda becomes his trainer, but he really gives a lot of cool, cool backstories. I will say this before I get into kind of how the story goes. I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview. I'm going to tell you about how it is. It's a long novel. It's a long out of book. I'm not going to get into every single detail. And when I mention people, I'll give a little bit about it, but I will not, like, I'm just not going to cover the whole thing. If you want us to start yeah. covering characters and their backstories, I'll cover some of the characters and the backstories. I'll just give you a quick glimpse of stuff that's going on. And I'm really not going to get into the Ventress stuff. I'll tell you a little bit, but we do have a planned Ventress thing coming up. Um, I know we've talked about doing Voss and Ventress, and I think we're going to do a Voss and Ventress thing so we can get a little bit more deeper into dive into those. <clears throat> but what I will say is that he, before this book came out, there was a book that came out called Master and Apprentice, also on Del Rey. And Master and Apprentice was an Obi-Wan and a Anakin book, a novel. It's written by Gray, who I think she is, she, I don't think, she's by far my favorite Star Wars writer currently as novels. I like her style. I like how she does characters. I like her storytelling. And I think she sticks to a pretty standard understanding of the Force um, and how the characters in real life would act or how they were intended to act. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you've ever read Bloodlines, you've heard us talk about Bloodlines before. I think that's a key book. If you want to start off, read that book. If you like that book, you're going to like everything she writes. <clears throat> well, let's go on. So he got in with her because in, in, in Master and Prentice, Obviously, it has Qui-Gon Jinn in it, and Qui-Gon Jinn has a part in Dooku's storyline. Although they start off with Dooku as a child, growing up and what he's going to do, he ends up wanting to have a ma his he, For his master, he doesn't, like Yoda wasn't who he was going to pick, right? He wanted to pick a master, and her name is Co Costana, Costana. And what Costana was, was like, you know, if you watched our Grey Jedi thing, she was almost like a Grey Jedi. She believed okay. in the light side, and she believed that the light side was there, but she also believed that you have to study the the Sith holocrons because there was going to be a Sith uprising. The Jedi Council didn't like that. Dooku was in the same training group as a, another Padawan by the name of sifo yeah. Anybody know who sifo is? He's one of the stars of the Clone Army. Yeah, he's the one that goes and does all that. This is 
So what he's referencing right here, for those of you who don't know or having maybe a little trouble following, when they when Dooku captures Obi Wan on Geonosis and he has him suspended and he's kind of in the big force lightning and and up you know like that and Dooku was walking around and talking about Sifo-Dyas and and the teacher and how this is kind of what the, that goes into and starts to explain because that section of, of the Clone Wars movie, episode two, creates a ton of questions and nothing gets answered in the movies. Here's your answers. Yeah, and nothing gets answered really in – so a lot of it doesn't even get answered in, in Clone Wars. Like they answer some of it because they, they do the sifo ghost thing or whatever, and they do a bunch of other things in there because sifo at one time goes to Master Yoda, like the failing thing and whatever. But they do hit on that that pretty much sifo was shot down by Count Dooku um, and supposedly killed. And he, we found out in Clone Wars that he didn't actually die right away, um, that type of stuff. But it gives a backstory on sifo and it shows that they were actually really friends. As a matter of fact, uh, Count Dooku gets in a duel when they're trying, trying to impress the Jedi Masters, and he one-handedly, and you see like that stance where he does it later on in, in a lot of his fighting style, he one-handedly pretty much just beat sifo Dias. sifo Dias is not good with a lightsaber at all. Um, and he could just end him there and then pretty much show how great he was, but he decides to show him, he decides to battle him to a tie or whatever they call a draw, I guess, because it's like battling, like whatever. So they end up getting in a draw and then to, to add insult to injury and maybe kind of doing something like, this is like how he's deep diving and doing deep cuts too again. Like sifo Dias is like, well, that's great. Or um, Duke is like, that's great. You know, at least I showed this. This is the way of the Jedi. And then he doesn't get what he wants. Instead of getting uh, Kasna as a Jedi trainer, Kasna, Kasna, Kasna as a Jedi trainer, he en- she ends up training sifo Dias. And this is this kind of like he's kind of chapped yeah. about it, right? So that's like kind of one of the, he's already kind of like, man, I used to be this rich kid, and now they drag me away from that. But whatever, then I do the right thing. Now I don't get the trainer I want. So then he goes in, has a little thing, and uh, you know Yoda takes over. Which God, I, I mean, that's cool. Like she's down with the Sith artifacts and all. I like Yoda. Doesn't matter. For later on in the series too, they they go more into her. Uh, they go more into Kasna because they. Uh, because he actually does do a lot of work with sifo Dias and that, and they go into the site, they, they deep dive into sifo Dias. So sifo Dias, he really starts seeing these visions and having these problems because she was taking him to these planets and getting into these Seth relics, and he might not have been like ready for that. So there's yeah. he starts having these like issues and everything like that, and uh, Dooku kind of tries to help with that, but also kind of sees like, wait a minute, what's going on? Should we be studying this? Should we not? that transfers over to master and apprentice later on when they get in and it also brings up uh, his first apprentice, which is rail. Arvros. I screw R A L E. Arvros is the good his last name. That guy also shows up in master and apprentice and he also turns into one of these Jedis that are very questionable. They're not quite great Jedis, but he does cause he has the same type of problem. He starts to have, issues with seeing futures and just like sifo Diaz has a future thing. Rail has like a kind of a future kind of vision thing. And originally they try to hide sifo Diaz's future visions because the Jedi council sees as not being met being good. That causes cost his Jedi trainer to kind of go grayish and she tries to hide it on the Jedi council. So that's where we kind of see, they might retcon some of the stuff to make it make it into great Jedi's. But that's where we see that. So it's really deep. It's a great novel. It just hits, like you think the story's going to be about Dooku yeah. and then all of a sudden you're getting like man, dude, wait, he's doing sifo Dias's backstory. He's doing their trainer's backstory. He's doing just a, a kind of like a dip over because then his first mm-hmm. apprentice goes there. Then he does a thing where he starts getting they start getting into Qui-Gon Jinn because Qui-Gon Jinn's his second apprentice. So he starts getting into a little bit of Qui-Gon Jinn and they're back and forth. In the meantime, they also add a little Aja Ventress in there for a little bit of fun and kind of start talking about how she view, it's not from quite from her point of view, but kind of how she views what's going on with him after the slave. Like, because Aja Ventress is like, a, I'll just quick it. She uh, eventually ends up in a slave area and a Jedi tries to come and save him, her. Mm. It doesn't work well. Uh, and Dooku actually ends up picking her up. But so it, they go through all that. They go through that. And then at the end, of the, there's like a part 
so there's a part where now now his the master that he wants cost Kosna is there on Serena and he's like look dude the galactic or the the the, the, the empire the the republic at the time is not taking care of him not doing it even though they're paying a lot of taxes it becomes a little separated and he's like why would I be part of the Jedi when they're not helping me out? He goes through this mo- this big speech with uh, Yoda, and he pretty much is like, "Got two words, I'm out, bro. I'm going <laughs> back to be the Count. You know, my mom's dead, the family's gone. They and they get into his family, but like, yeah, mom's dead, family's gone, and and it's really deep character building. The whole novel is really deep character building, which is really cool to see that he has that range. Because Gus, you know, he's already done like the kitty stuff. The choose your own. He did a choose your own Chewbacca adventure. He did, you know, these writers now that they got with this stuff is crazy. So he did that. His range is deep. Then he starts doing the horror thing, which is kind of cool. And now he's doing deep, deep, deep character development. Really good book. I really suggest it. If nothing else, get the audio. Listen to the audio of that thing. So he has his little monologue with Yoda. He they get into all that cool stuff. You get to see and hear about a lot of other characters. Um, and then they start talking about um, they start talking about uh, this series. Then you know the, the information comes out that he's going to start writing a comic book again. He's going to do the Star Wars: The High Republic. He's going to do yeah. the the Nile. Um, I, I think this is going to be a good book. I, I, I'm excited for it. I am too. I'm yeah, I do. It. I do. So the, you know they've described it. They didn't let him describe it, but they let somebody else. I think Gray described it as like. Maybe it wasn't, but they're like, oh, they're space Vikings. And I'm like, yeah, they kind of are. But like when you're talking about when you're talking about the High Republic, let's kind of talk about how it's gonna it it looks like they're developing it, right? Like it's gonna be kind of like the exploratory area. Like you're moving if you think about it in the culinary colonel whatever, when you're expanding, you're expanding to the west, right? Of the mm-hmm. United States. Because it's oh, always right. about yeah, it's always about the it's always about the westerns and everything else. So he's doing a combination of that. And a combination of like conquering tribes, right? So these characters are going to be not just conquering tribes because, and I'll tell you why we know this in a minute, but they're also going to be the, the looters and plunders on the road while you're traveling through space. Well, that's what I got when you said Vikings. I'm like, all right, I'm thinking explorers who are willing to fight. Like, yeah. So I think there's going to, I think, I think mainly in a lot of his series, maybe we will see Jedi's, maybe we won't. I think we're going to see more scoundrels. I think we're going to see a bunch of scoundrels because he does write scoundrels really well. Yeah. He has a tendency for doing it. The wild space thing has a lot of scoundrels in it, right? And I think you're going to see these guys, these scoundrels and bounty hunter types trying to go out to the quote unquote West or expand into the wild space. The wild space is going to be the new West. And he's going to write that expansion on how that's going to happen through comic books. And this Nile, they are, they are going to be, a big focus of that because they're going to be the, the the true keepers of it. And a lot of the stuff's cool in there. I know for, I've seen some of the art that they're using for some of that stuff. Like we know that the guy who did the art for Darth Maul has already done a lot of the preview art for like a lot of the higher public stuff too. But I, but this stuff, some of the characters that we've seen that we think are going to be like the, the, uh, the explorers of this new space are taking off even older projections of like the original, cuts in the original drafts of what they were doing for star Wars originally. And I knew for a while there on a lot of boards, there was kind of rumors that like, Oh, the Nile might be related to dark Nihilus or dark Nile. The guy that was in the uh, Sith Republic that I don't think it's the case, but there is, there is something, but there is something that he has done before that kind of tells us that it isn't. And what it is, is if we go all the way back Hmm. to star Wars adventures, number 30, this is a panel from Star Wars Adventures number 30 for those that can't see it. It is it's the graphs so uh it's their grandkid. It's Milo's great great grandkid or grandkid. Either way in a robot and they're having a chat right here. And in the bottom part I kind of highlighted in red and it says uh destroyed by the Nith Raiders centuries ago and they're talking about a library. So they're talking about them coming in and pillaging a library and completely destroying a planet and just like setting the planet ablaze. And when they did it, they destroyed this famous library. So that doesn't sound, I mean, that doesn't sound like Sith at all. Like it literally sounds like outside Raiders doing it. By the way, he did that a long time ago and now it's showing back up. So who knows what other stuff is going to show up because we know he likes the deep cuts and everything else in some of those books. Who knows if Vader Castle is going to play him back that? Who knows if it, you know, those adventures, uh, Star Wars adventures are, 
there's not a ton of those Star Wars adventures that he's actually writing in. I think out of the 38, there's probably only, I think maybe a handful, like 12, and I think he does an annual in there too. So it won't be hard to get some of those backstories, but if you want to get some stuff on there and you want to get it probably now, because I think when he starts passing these up, you know, it's going to be a lot. And I love these too. Remember the old Marvel books where they're like, see, you know, Marvel Tales number 64 for the, uh, I think they're going to start doing that in the Star Wars books. And you're going to go back and you're going to have to go back and hit those books up real quickly. I know that's working. Doesn't Donny Cates, does, I haven't read a Cates book yeah. in a while, but doesn't Donny Cates do that now too? And yeah, I think he, it's he definitely ties back into to older stuff like that. Things yeah, that and I think, resonated with him when he was younger. Yeah, he uses the little books like we get read Yeah, when we were younger with the tie back ins. And I have a mm-hmm. feeling that this is something they're going to be doing. I could be wrong, but I feel like that's kind of the, the way they're going. And even if they don't mention it like that, he definitely, as we've seen you know, throughout his career, he will tie back into the stuff he's done before. Um, I think he's definitely going to drop little snippets. He's going to have little Easter eggs. He's going to pull in because that's just his style. And and style. it's part of the reason that makes him so good and so fun and just, I mean, such a good storyteller because he has a lot of that fan base from previous stuff. So when he brings in those little Easter eggs, you know, like the, like the little, little Wookiees from the, 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 the Christmas show and you know stuff like that i mean he just he just brings in those little guys yeah i mean he does that he did the Great. the double ewok things that he did the one where they had actual characters he did the ones where <laughs> the ones that are lost in the caravan he did like he but not just that like even in his own books he's gone back and brought little tidbits back on that and i think that's yeah. kind of like you saw that with soul too you saw soul doing a lot of that and i think a lot of these artists um that they're bringing into the high republic are guys and i think because they work so closely with the story group they were asking if they could put stuff in for later writings and it's set up well because they've done so well. Like maybe it wouldn't have worked out if he didn't do so well with Vader's castle, the first one. But I think since that was done so well, he got a second run on it. And I would assume that he's going to do another, I'm assuming. I, I hope to get the third run on it as well this this year or, or even next. Hopefully, yeah, I, hoping when, this year, but hoping this year too. Yeah. But hopefully he gets that. But what I'm telling you is like, these got, you know, these two gentlemen, obviously, but all the writers in general, if you see their stuff, read something, if you like it, I'd go back and pick their stuff up. Cause it's not bad reads at worst. You just bought a dollar book or a $2 book or a five exactly. dollar book. It's a good read at best. You got backstory that, you know, is going to be expensive because all backstories when something ha- it doesn't matter if they're, you know, s- snapping their fingers or there's a car or something like that all of a sudden it turns a 50 cent book into a five dollar book spend a dollar now save four for later um, well and if you're reading later on in the future and they go oh hey by the way remember this in in star wars adventures number 30 oh look i have that book i can reference that real quick yes yeah, so you go back and roll. Roll. so for a dollar you got reference material all day long that's not a bad investment no, and like we said a lot of times too, I mean, and this is how I, I know a lot of people do and I do too, is like when you want to collect Star Wars stuff, you want to collect the whole of it. So like mm-hmm. now's the time to collect some of these holes, guys. Like I know it's tough out there to get them. I feel you. Do it safely, but but go out there and get them, man. Uh, I hope this helped. I, I really did. Um, Wookie, we got, the th- we got the thing. We got it. Everybody good? Okay, what's our thing? Tell it to us. All right. Gotta do? So you got to go down. You have to force push that like button. You have to force choke that subscribe. You have to saber smash that alarm so you can see the handsomest faces in all the galaxy from far, far away. Awesome. Thanks, Luke. Thanks a lot. Uh, guys, I really, I mean, hey, listen, tell us next. We might do a great thing. We might combine the rest of them because a lot of the rest of the artists if i remember correctly but this was supposed to be a combo one and we ended up expanding that because we we put vader's castle in it but i don't think the other ones are that we'll get through the rest of the higher public people in there um if there's any other suggestions any other writers that you like that have done cross stories uh if there's any storylines that you want us to get deeper dive into if you want us to do do adventures and all 38 books of that kind of review that we can do that review for you too or anything else just put in the comments we're here we got time we got time. We probably read it. If we didn't, well, we'll come talk it. to us so that we can come talk to you. Right. So give us the suggestions down there. Give us all the stuff the Wookiee said, uh, or he'll take off uh, your arms and beat you with them. And, uh, <laughs> and may the force be with you. There you go. Always. May the force be with you always.